Hello, David. Welcome to Automate All the Things. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you, Aaron. I'm so excited to uh, automate some things together today. Yeah, so we're going to automate all the things. But first, some familiar faces, some new faces in the chat. We've got Shashi, Amrik, Glenn, Colleen, Daniel. It feels like everyone wants to learn how to build mobile apps. But before we jump in, before we jump in, quick, let's talk about you a little bit. So David, how about a quick introduction into yourself, into Glide? Uh, tell us what brings you here today. Sure. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Glide. Uh, and we are a no-code tool for building powerful, beautiful apps based on data. And um, my co-founders and I created Glide after uh, we worked for a company that helped uh, businesses build internal mobile apps. And we saw that there was this huge demand in enterprise, at least, companies that could afford to hire high-end and rare mobile developers mm. for building custom internal mobile apps. And we thought this idea was fascinating um, because you have all these employees bringing their own phones and iPads to work. And companies want to take advantage of this, mm. uh, but we didn't see a lot of success. Like the, the concept was amazing, but it was just too hard to do. Um, so after that company, we were really motivated to see like how 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 much simpler could this whole process be of creating software? Yeah, and we had kind of this broader perspective on it of like the design has to be simpler, mm. managing the data has to be simpler, assembling the logic and sharing it all has to be simpler. How far can we go with this concept? So Glide was our attempt to see how far we can go. So, yeah, I love, I, there's a few things I want to just kind of ease out a little bit there. And I love the fact that you come from an experience and said, hey, this is too hard to build. Let's, let's democratize it to an extent. But I think a lot of people, when they think mobile app, think Facebook, think, uh, you know, a game type. And there are kind of no code game builders out there. But it sounds like you are specifically focused on internal applications, which might be something folks are not familiar with or don't use. Yeah. Can you kind of talk a little bit, A, why internal apps and B, what are some of those sure. use cases that you, you know, have in mind for Glide? So, yeah, we, we encountered this phenomenon at this company that I mentioned before of companies with hundreds of private mobile apps for their employees mm. only. So many apps that they have their own internal app stores and we would call these dark apps, meaning mm. that they're kind of private and not public. Right. Um, and we, we, this was our mantra. Like we want to make it easy to build dark apps. We weren't really interested in the app store right. um, or public distribution. We wanted to enrich the lives of the world's working people yeah. and deal with data and have to file for paid time off, <laughs> submit expenses right. or, you know, look up their colleagues in an employee directory. We wanted to give them, beautiful experience that's on par with what you get in the app store. But we forgot, these were like the forgotten users right. of software. Yeah. And um, we knew we could build a business for them. Absolutely. Um, and I we stopped using this term dark apps. It sounds so nefarious. We call them now apps for work. Right. Glide is for building apps for work. That makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, this, I'm, I'm excited that we're doing the stream um, because, you know, I, I've recently moved to New York slice story slice and um you know someone came to install the wi-fi in in the apartment and you know the effort this person had to do to like pick out an ipad go on a browser like go into their internal systems to update you know an example um uh, to update some data and i was like oh th that person has a phone why aren't we leveraging that phone and probably the answer is like we don't have a hundred developers to to you know, connect our systems to a mobile app that is easy to use. So I think, you know, I'm, I have, uh, in the past talked about how I don't think mobile apps that are widely distributed should be built on no code, but internal apps yeah. is a different story. So I'm really excited uh, to kind of show people how to do that. So maybe yeah. before we kind of frame up, what are some of the most common examples you mentioned directory expensing, uh, what are the use cases that you think mobile app is perfect here? Yeah. So first of all, Glide is much broader than just mobile apps. And right. we'll show you that today. We're going to make a, a web and desktop application as well. But we, we started with mobile uh, because we felt it was the most acutely painful type of software development. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to like a hackathon, very few people are doing mobile. Even, even among developers, mobile is very painful. Right. And when you're design, designing a mobile app is a simpler thing to do. 
So we wanted to start with an easier thing. If you're design, if you're using Glide on your laptop, you get this cute little phone in the middle of your screen. Mm -hmm. It's easy to, to work on. Um, because of this mobile orientation, what we see are these use cases that fall in a category that we call field ops or field operations. Right, exactly. Um, doing deliveries, mm -hmm. picking things up, walking around a warehouse, reporting issues, managing inventory in a retail store, anything where you're not sitting at a desk and looking at a large screen and you're interacting with information at a company, this is what Glide is great for. Yeah. Um, and usually what we see are customers, they have an existing spreadsheet or an Airtable. Uh, they may, one person administers it on a computer in an office. Right. And then you have people giving them pieces of paper or calling them yeah. or walking over to them and asking them questions. And then they look at the spreadsheet and they tell them. And then Glide makes it portable, right. accessible. Yeah. And it makes it so people can access and update the information. So you have these mobile business use cases, delivery, inventory, issue reporting, events is a big one. This is a great customer story we have on our website is the PGA. Um, they right. were using pen and paper tickets. Right, of and the course. The next year they had a glide app where they're scanning barcodes and checking people in and running lost and found. That's all on your feet using mobile devices. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm super excited to jump in because this app is for everyone except me because I do spend my whole day sitting in front of a screen. But there's use cases for me as well, I'm sure. So I'm trying to free you from your apartment. Exactly. And yet here I am. I just spend my whole day just between these 30 inches is what I have, um, usually in front of an air table base. But um, so I'd love to know in the chat, we've got a bunch of folks uh, say hi. Let me know if you're in uh, uh, a Glide developer, what your interest is. Let me know in the chat and we're going to kind of adjust as we built out our use case here. So let me start sharing my screen here. Um, so everyone should see it here. I'm in, I'm starting an Airtable. Let's actually go into Glide. Let's first just frame up what we want to build today. So David, walk us yeah. through, you know, the, this kind of use case that we've thought up that is like emblematic sure. of what Glide can do. Yeah. So, um, we found a, a base in the Airtable templates gallery, so ev everyone can copy it if you'd like to follow along or try this later. Um, and we're just going to use the free version of Glide. So everything you can, everything you see today, you can sign up and you can create. You don't have to pay or upgrade. Yeah, I'm just going to drop um, that so in the chat. If folks want to build along, that's the template we're going to be using. So feel free yeah. to follow that. Um, so yeah, we're going to use this expense tracking template because that fits perfectly the situation that I described. Mm -hmm. of, centralized information that's managed in a company's spreadsheet or air table, mm -hmm. but you have people contributing to it right. and they're usually not in front of their PC. Right. You know, they're not, when you're scanning a receipt on a business trip, you're like standing in an airport or you know, at a restaurant, you yeah. don't have your laptop open. Exactly. Perfect. So this is the perfect complement for Airtable for like the mobile use case, but we're going to make two apps. We're going to make a, a mobile app for people to report expenses. We'll call that reporter. And then we're quickly, if we have time, going to make a, uh, a web application for the HR team to approve or reject these expenses. Right. So a way for just, I'm, I'm on at the airport. I want to scan an expense. I just want to put it into my mobile app, my internal mobile application. And then yep. secondary, someone on, I would call this like the back end, a front end for the back end, if you will, where an, only an HR person can say, I've approved this, I've rejected this. Yeah. But the actual back end, the information, all of the expenses will live in Airtable. It's just we're, we're kind of putting a, a mobile front end and a front end uh, for these two different apps that communicate with the same data source. That's super exciting. Um, yeah. How do I start? Um, so yeah, let's go copy that expense tracking Airtable base. Yeah, I've got it here. I'm calling it Expenses okay. Glide. So just Great. do we want to over... We've got a short description of what it is, a photo of... Uh, uh, a receipt photo, date and time, yeah. total. Let, let's make two changes. Yeah. Um, change the category column type to just single text because we're going to let uh, users in our app add uh, more, more types of expenses. OK. Uh, and then you can. Um, I can delete the who paid. Let's just assume that the submitter paid. Sure. Yeah. OK, great. Um, and then let's add one column, add a checkbox column for whether it's approved or not that we can in our approval workflow. Okay, perfect. Let's go approved. Approved, and this is going to be a checkbox. Fine and dandy. There we go. Okay, great. Now let's go to Glide. Boom. Um, so let's create a new project. Um, and first, we're going to create a Glide app for this, uh, the reporter use case. Let's call it reporter. Reporter. 
So this is the person submitting the expense. Yeah. Fantastic. And we're going to use Airtable today, but uh, you can use Glide with Excel, Google Sheets, and you can even upload a, an Excel file. Got it. Okay. Boom. I've already connected my account. I've got, so I called this Glide. Great. Boom. Yeah. Straight Pick the base. And when you choose your Airtable base or when you upload an Excel spreadsheet or you choose a Google Sheet, Glide will analyze the data and it creates what we call the default app. Um, so it's loading the data right now. It's constructing the app. And we're, ba we're actually done. Boom. Done. Um, Thank you for so coming, you everyone. This was great. David. Really, no, really had a great time, Aaron. This uh, was fun. This was fun. <laughs> um, um, and then, but the, the default app is just the information, lets you add, edit, and update things. But let's uh, go back to your dashboard. Go back to my Maybe dashboard. Go back yeah, go back up, uh, that arrow in the, in the left. Okay. And we're going to create one more project. We're going to create the approver um, on Glide Pages. And we're just going to pick the, the same base and call it approver. Okay, got it. So essentially, we're, we're connecting to the same backend, if you will. We're saying all, both of these right. apps communicate with the same Airtable base, but potentially in different ways. Right. Yeah. They're okay. They have different interfaces, but they're both continuously syncing back and forth with the Airtable. Okay. So things uh, updated in Airtable our... will be reflected on the app, and um, right. things updated here will be reflected to Airtable if we give them permission. Right. So now I've got an app. Same thing. Done again. Yeah. So this is the, the web version of Glide, and we'll come back to this as well. But I just want to sort of frame what we're going to build today. Got it. Um, so we'll come back to this, but now let's go finish the the reporter app. Okay. Boom. Repotter. It's a repotter. Yeah. Uh, repotter. Repotter. Let's just keep it. Let's keep it. Fine. Doesn't matter. You no. can read, so if you go to your settings, let's start there. The gear icon in the uh, the center top. These are your main areas of Glide. Right here. The center top of the uh, entire Glide interface. Center Directly top. above the Wi-Fi signal. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, got it. <laughs> so Reporter. Let's fix the typo. Very good. Boom. And let's pick instead of a a baby chicken. Um, well, let's go back to settings. We're going to go through the settings a little bit. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, uh, go to name and icon, and let's pick uh, an emoji, like let's do a credit card. Okay, that makes sense. So that's going to be the icon on your home screen. Now we'll go to appearance. So this is something that's very special about Glide, is Glide is no code, but you may have also heard this term, no design. Right. A lot of no code tools lead all, leave all of the color values and rounding radii and the design decisions to you, but our, our core customers, business users who quickly want to like get a great app to use at workout, yeah. they're not designers. So what you can do here is you can click around and you can try a couple different themes. So try the dark theme. Um, let's pick a different accent color so it can scroll up. Let's say our company uses a uh, green or something blue. You've come um, to the right this, place. I'm a, uh, this is a no design stream. So this is, good. this no is perfect. Allowed. Yeah, no, absolutely. No one trusts me with design and I think that's a right decision. Okay, green. There will be more designs to come, but um, and then just go back to the light theme. Um, it will automatically adjust light or dark okay, depending great. on your phone's settings. So that's a pretty sophisticated design behavior that we give you for free. Okay, got it. Um, and the final thing let's take a look at is privacy. Um, let's make sign in optional and let's make it so anyone can use the app. Got it. Um, okay. So we're going to share it once we're done and everyone's going to interact with it and this will make it so people don't have to sign in. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, great. So now let's go design the app itself. So if you click on layout. Okay. So again, here at the top are kind of uh, just a mode at the top here is like, I have my data and then I have yep. the app itself where I designed and then kind of the settings, if you will. So that, right. that gives, gives me good context. Okay. So now we're designing yep. the app itself. Now, now we're going to design it. So go ahead and just play with these styles over here. And like, let's see if there's one that catches your eye. Calendar definitely. Not yeah. Play. Cards. I like cards. Okay. Okay. And then click edit cards list and we'll, we'll get some more design details. Okay. Got it. So, so I recommend scroll down, um, see the size, uh, option under the design setting. I said it was noticed. This is some design. Yeah, it's okay, good. It's, it's enough. just enough design that I can make it look just good. That's good. Just enough design. Um, if I um, can make something look good, anyone can. And I think that's the goal. Go ahead and click, click on these and see what these options do. Okay. So you're just sort of playing around with the settings. To design your I app. like this. Um, oh, I like this better. Because I'm going to have that a lot of great. receipts. That looks great. No, corners. When you change the there. rounding, change the shadow. I would do, see the image shape, three by one. Three by one, um, yeah. 
option. Do square. That's going to be better for yeah. these images. Okay, got it. Perfect. And um, one other thing we can do, you see this overlay section for the tag. Let's choose. So scroll down. Mm. Um, uh, tag. Um, click on those three dots, and let's connect it to the uh, the total price of each item. Oh, got it. Okay, so this is actually live pulling from uh, this base right here. So I'm essentially saying right. take the total and put it as and a tag a little, on the overlay. Got it. Got it. Little four, yeah. Okay. And you didn't have to know that that pill is like 12 pixels from the left and no. the right side, and how the rounding works, and we used white text on the accent color. And if you go change your accent color, it updates everywhere. You just want to show the price and like we're done. Appreciate that. That, um, that means a lot to me. Amazing. OK. <laughs> so now let's uh, click on that plus button in the upper right hand corner of the uh, the app. Of the app right here. OK, so this is so another, adding a new, I would say record. Good. But in this case, I don't know that it's a record because I'm using the app. So this is just a new receipt. Right. We're just adding a receipt. OK. Um, so let me say that um, another property of Glide is that the thing that you're building is also the running app. Right. And we took that principle from spreadsheets, where the spreadsheet is like development environment and it's the application. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, okay. So this is all live. Like what you see. This is all live. Got it. Um, so um, just a, uh, I know there's a few questions around payment, like what is available? Can we limit things? I, I'm taking mental note. We will get to those questions. So Connor, yeah. uh, I saw a question from Daniel. Let's give it. Let's get a little further. So we're building something, and then I'll answer all of these questions. Uh, and I think there's some Glide Pros also helping out. I appreciate that. Um, okay, um, so we're adding a new item, and this is a live adding item. So talk me through yeah. how do I customize? What can I do here? So the, when the default app was constructed, when you picked your base, Glide did some very rudimentary analysis of like the names of your fields in Airtable mm. and what data they. And it put kind of like the bare minimum ad form together, but it's it's too bare minimum. Right. So on the left hand side, you can see the components is laid out. Got it. So first of all, see that switch it did for approved. Yeah, right here. We can remove. We that. don't want that. Yeah. We don't want that because people okay. shouldn't approve their own. There. You can't approve your own expenses now. Um, but let's start at the top with the text entry. So the short description. Uh, go ahead and click on that. And on the right hand side, you see the properties of this component. Oh, amazing. Um, so this is going to write into the short description field in the Airtable right. base. Um, but let's change the title to uh, see in the design section. Uh, where, where? So right here? No, this is actually changing the column that I'm talking about. And then title down, right down. here. Yeah. yeah. So we should call this the title. Short description is, I think, a weird name for it in yeah. the base, but this is like the title of the expense. Or should I call it like what what is so what did you buy like the what did you yeah. buy what what is it what is it what is it what right is it? what is and then it? Um, make it required so people have to provide required this. okay cool and then let's go to the the next components an image picker yeah uh, so this is the photo of the item so maybe for the title we quickly say take a picture and this okay so people can actually input right so camera they can take camera or photo roll. So that's actually really cool. Right. So you're essentially allowing people to take that image. That's great. And make it required. Required. There we go. Boom. Getting the. We don't have to make it required. No, that's okay. It's more fun. Um, now this is a picture of the receipt. So I think the title should be receipt and required. Got it. Um, let's go to date time. Now here's we'll do something new here for the default value. Click on those three dots and choose now. So we'll put oh, the, the current time. Fantastic. Um, and uh, but folks can change number. it right so they can say oh it's actually three days from yeah. before okay great yeah yeah and go ahead and click on uh, number entry total um maybe we call this cost right yeah cost or receipt total yeah. and make it required boom um category let's remove category for now actually so let's get rid of that component sure. and then for the notes column let's just make the size larger to encourage people to uh like that to um Maybe the mediums. That's a lot of notes. For lot of, <laughs> it's like, give me everything. Okay. Where were you? What did you do with this? You know, okay, medium. Medium is a little less aggressive. You're right. So let's like let's add your first expense. Go ahead okay, and fill yeah. this out. What is it? Uh, phone charger. Choose an image. Do I have an image of something? Uh, let's just put the the thumbnail from today. That's totally fine. Go ahead. Receipt. Do I have a I have a little Apple phone that I bought. Cost was two hundred dollars. Two hundred notes. This is a test expense. Boom. Great. 
you click add. Add. Oh, great. And we have a phone charger. Fantastic. And if you go to your go to your Airtable base. Oh wow. There it is. Okay. Okay. I think I think we can do an early confetti for that one because that's actually pretty cool because there's a lot to have in there. So I'm gonna. We're gonna... Well, let, let's do the more fun thing, which is go back to the how are we doing on time? Okay. No, we're good. Go we're good on time. The... I'm sorry. Go back to uh, glide. Yeah. Um, now, what I don't like is that it it's sorted at the end. So go uh, click on this uh, uh, cards list component on the left. Cards list comp. Yeah, right here. And let's go to options. Options. Uh, top, all the way at the top. Oh, got it, got it. Got it. And sort by click on sheet order. Right. I guess that would be base order. Um, and change instead of sheet order. That this what you just did works, but let's actually be a little bit more robust. Let's do by the date and time. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Day. Like this. So new so receipts will be in the top the left, top. and then they'll kind of cascade. Yeah. And uh, okay, can I test this in a certain way? So let's say I I change a date and time to something, you know, let's say I did, oh, wow, 2015. This template is old. It's an old base. It's an old base. Um, if uh, Zoel is watching, your your templates are still still super strong. Um, OK, and then we we would expect this to, I can refresh probably, but I'm sure, is this yeah, right? Um, we get we get up, updates from Airtable every couple of minutes, and they okay. will happen live in front of you. OK, so uh, let's leave it there, and we'll see. Them, yeah, you can also force it, but we could, we'll take an intermediate step. So right now, I think we should do the audience participation part yeah. because it's so fun. Let's do it. Go ahead and click Publish and publish your app. And uh, so Glide apps are published as PWAs. We don't do anything with the App Store because we want you to have full control over who uses your app and how you share it. Um, so let's change the link. We gave you this sort of nonsense random link, uh -huh. billowy curve. It has uh, nothing to do with you. Uh, and change it to um, Aaron dash expenses or you know something. A T T dash glide. There you go. Great. So that's this is the link. And if anyone on the stream wants to scan this QR code, you can open the app right now. Okay, but PG, like remember, folks, I I will find you. So you know, hey Venzi, welcome. So go ahead and I'm gonna try this. So get your phone. Right here. Get the QR code. Open it. So it loads in your browser. You can add it to your home screen if you want, um, but you can also just use it in the browser. And okay, I'm so I'm adding an expense here. This is Aaron's expense. I'm going to choose an image from my photo library. I, I encourage folks to do it. So I'm going to put a cute cat. My well, you know. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. I will. F okay, more cat photos. Also, um, oh, Aaron, you should close this dialogue because we'll see. The oh, right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, who's first? Also, who's I first? How many people are doing this at once? I don't think we've ever had like 50 people adding to the Airtable base at the same time. Okay, um, I just added one. Boom, we got blocks. Okay. One I did. There we um, go. So they're, they're coming in as they're added. And again, if you go to the Airtable base, you're going to see them start to accumulate there. All right, we got blocks. Who, who's got the, we've got my expense. Fantastic. You, design the screen yet. <laughs> you know, perfectly built. Um, so if folks are having, let me try to, can I share it? I'm going to just share the link in the, yeah, in the chat. If you folks can use it in your browser. There you go. So folks like. again, I will find whoever does anything that's inappropriate. I appreciate everyone. Um, um uh, so cool. Now I think I mean we could we could move on to the um the approval. There's a lot more we could do here. We could design the detail screen when you go into these events. Let's do one thing. Let's sure. let's show a powerful feature of Glide. Yeah. So go to go into Aaron's expense. Yeah. And um I want you to right click uh below below the component list in the white in the white area on the, uh, left. On the left here. Delete all of the components that Glide gave you. <clears throat> cool. And then, so this black plus is how we add components, which is how we design your app. Oh, got it. So let's add uh, the title component in the upper left. This is a very common, I think that works. <laughs> you can also just- Yeah, click just it. click on it. That makes more sense. So, uh, so first of all, in the appearance settings, you can click through those three options. Appearance, uh, in the middle. where do you see that in the middle? 
in the middle of the design uh, options. Oh, here, you know, appearance. Like, yeah, got it. So these are like common title designs for mobile apps. Oh, got and it. You don't have to figure them out. We just do it for you. Um, for the details, maybe let's pick um, instead of the category, which we haven't set up yet. I'm sorry. Uh, click on your title component on the left in the component yeah, list. Yeah, here we go. And the details is the second data component. It's currently selected category. So when you open this, you're seeing all of the properties and you're mm. going to pick which one it's going to bind to. So let's do uh, the total. It's fine. Oh, got it. So it's just going to display the total. So this is essentially if I click into an expense, um, yeah. could I show whether it's been approved or what else can I put in here? Yeah. So see the, uh, the, the data tab on the left? The data tab. Yeah, right here. If you click this, this shows you the Airtable record that we're like building a page for. Oh, I got it. I got it. And let's add, uh, instead of, let's not use that approved piece of data. We're going to add a, a computation here. Okay, sure. Something so you can click on that plus icon again. And when we're in the data tab, what we're adding are columns to, to the data model and not to the screen. Yeah. So we're going to add an if then else column. So just type if. Yeah. And uh, if then else. And we're going to call this um, approval label. Okay, call it approval yeah. label. Approval. Yeah. So in Glide is a very powerful programming environment. Right. And you program by creating calculated columns that do analysis on your data and produce novel results. Mm -hmm. And by creating actions that update and interact. So in Glide, you can create a button that when you press it, writes a timestamp, adds a record, sends a web hook, and plays a sound and shows a notification. And you're getting that. you're getting the crowd excited. If we can do that, yeah, folks, okay. if if we can press a button, makes a sound, sends a web hook, you you people people in the chat and it's We're gonna doing be... it right after we do this. Okay, table. absolutely. So we, and, but instead of writing formulas, so Airtable has this sort of formula editor. A lot of tools rely on formulas. We think these are still too complex, and it's not no code if you're writing formula. Right. So we have these high level configurations right uh, here. for calculation. So we want to say if, uh, maybe you can figure out. Okay, I can try. If approved is true. Uh, so is that is one or true? One? You're going to have to write true. True, okay. This uh, is something we can improve. And then approved. You might have to write it in all caps too. Why don't, why don't you write it in all caps? It's all caps, yeah. Um, and let's put an emoji in there too. So like do like a check checkbox emoji approved. Okay. And then else. And then I would say it's like pending. Yeah, pending. Pending. And then maybe a uh, uh, sand. Sand? Those, uh, hourglasses. Hourglass? Hour? Hourglass? Yeah, here we go. Pending is good. You're much better with emojis than I am. Okay. Done. And then, yeah, click on it. Now on the left, have a uh, you can see in the data pad, we have this calculated label. And if we go go to the data editor, so we can see this for all of the rows. Uh, yeah, data, data okay. Editor. So data editor right here on top right. So now I have, yeah. interesting. So you've actually like- People are adding a ton of Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna explore all of these in a moment. So we have pending- you see, you have this calculated column for every row. It's doing that calculation. And that's updating instantaneously on your phone without going over the network. Okay. You could do this in Airtable, right? But there would be a latency of writing the value, having Airtable send us the results. But this happens real time. Okay, I'm really excited so to see. So I can add. Let's add a text. And then text. No, yeah. Oh, okay. I can control. There we go. Okay, and then I and want to find, find it to. Uh, so the text is gonna right now. It's bound to the category in the properties. Right. Bind it to One, approval two, label. label. Center. And let's style, let's center it, and let's make it bigger. And then go back to, um, so close this insert component panel. Close the insert component. Actually, just for fun, let's add a toggle. Let's just do this now on this page. Sure. Um, so then click plus, add a, oh, it's called a switch. Put a switch in. Um, this should automatically attach. Now, check it. It's, it's, it's working. Nice. Already. So it's instantly recalculating locally. Um, but we're not going to give end users this control. Yeah, so let's remove it. Okay. And let's add one more. Let's add one of these like automation things we talked about. Sure. Let's add a button. Add a button. Button. You're you're speaking my language here. Button. Like button. Um, the title should be. Let's have this um, delete. Let's make a delete expense button. Okay, got it. Um, and the mood. 
So this is another no design thing. This is a dangerous button. Right. You don't pick red. You just say it's danger. Got it. Um, I like the second or third style that the show has. Oh, you can pick that. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, like this. Second. No, delete. Yeah. Now go ahead and um, for the action, by default, it's just going to show a notification. Go ahead and click the button. Oh, it's just going to... Yay. Okay, no, that's not what we want. We want... Um, um, so... There's a ton of actions you can put on lots of things in Glide. Oh. Um, so when users interact, this is kind of the opposite of automation. This is manual stuff, but it's right. triggering a workflow. Um, and you can send webhooks, play sounds, but we're going to do a custom action uh, since we're short on time. So click show notification and choose create new action. Whoa. And we're going to do a sequence. Okay. So the first thing we want to do, so click on that open link action. Oh, yeah. Um, I want the first action to delete the current record. So where you have open link, you're going to choose uh, delete. delete. I love how we were like, let's build a mobile app. And then you're like, we also built an automation platform in in Glide. <laughs> That's like super cool. Well, I was not mobile, expecting. Mobile it's apps, like mobile apps do things. I know. It's not just. Like, I know. Uh, unfortunately, we, we haven't done a great job. People think Glide is for making mobile lists that scroll. Right. But it's, it's actually a full software development environment. Right. So, um, okay. After we delete... So you can click off of this little overlay. Yeah. Click plus. Now let's play a sound. Um, and we can just, we'll just use the default alert or alert, whatever yeah. you'd like. Okay. Um, click another plus again. Let's go back. And then click plus again. And let's uh, show a notification that says deleted. Uh, and then in the message, say deleted. And we're going to give this action a name in the upper right hand corner uh, and call it delete expense and save. And okay. now go ahead and delete this one. Okay, let's see if the sound will pop through. I think it will. It deleted the row, it went back, it played a sound, which we I didn't hear. It no, showed the notification. Okay, I can so, guarantee you that it played the sound. I don't know if it piped through the, the stream. Um, but I can play another sound. I can play the confetti sound, All right. uh, which was really um, impressive. So we've done a lot here. We've, we've, we've built the app. We've built some custom modifications. There's a question around web hooks. So I'd love to get to that at the end. So Mark, you're, you're reading my, reading my mind here. Um, but I do want to take a moment to see what everyone submitted. Uh, so we've got a hello for a hundred dollars. We've got a chicken. We've got books, right? My cat Zuzu. That's amazing. Is that really someone's cat? Because that their Zuzu's cute. I should. We should have a stream. We should have more Zuzu on the stream. Um, so this is fantastic. And I, I imagine that there's a way to like restrict this to be like only your expenses, right? So we're not going to get into that. But that's a question that I'm seeing a lot. That like, yeah, there is a way to filter. You can make Glide private to just the people you want to access the app. You can make it so each expense is tagged with the person who submitted it, and you only see yours. So we could have a company of a thousand people everyone with their own expenses and you don't see anyone else's. There's all of that sort of filtering and security features here. Uh, but this is faster and more fun to show when it's all together. I totally agree. Yeah. So um, that ability. So that was a question I'm, I'm seeing in the chat. Ice cream, Raina, absolutely love it. Darren, we need more of your cat on the stream. Uh, I think we need, you know, more Monsieur Georges, which was uh, my girlfriend's cat that I uh, use for, for clout on the web. Um, and we need more, more, uh, of your cat as well, Darren. Okay. So I'll show you one other thing. Um, if you go to the, your, your tab, one tab over where you've actually opened this app. Uh, oh, right here. Yeah, absolutely. Tab. We have all of that. Oh no. The, the, the actual one tab to the right. Of oh, the here. Tab you actually also tab. live. If you click, um, show full screen, um, it also has a tablet interface and we haven't designed this detail screen yet, but just so you know, if you were to open this on a tablet, like an iPad, Got it. Um, you, it, it would adapt and give you this sort of side by side view. So this is but, essentially, um, uh, um, I'm seeing some questions in chat. It's a good time to address it. So what you build is a progressive web app, right? That I can add to my home screen, but because it uses the web, essentially I can bring it on an iPad. I can see it on desktop. So I think that comes back to what you said at the beginning that yeah. yes, I can use this on mobile, but it's not actually a mobile app in the general sense. It's not in the app store and it's right. usable outside. 
It is not a native mobile app. It is a web-based, what they call progressive web app. That's right. right. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then even so in Chrome, in the upper right-hand corner of your uh, browser toolbar, you have those three dots. Yeah. And go ahead and do, um, I guess it's under more tools. Install. Install. Remember the install. You can install from Chrome. Maybe refresh this page. It should prompt you to do it in your address bar. Oh, wow. Yeah, click it. It's a desktop app, so go ahead and install it. It's just going to uh, okay, open it cool, wow. And now, so it's in its own window as kind of like the tablet mode. But if you make it narrow, it's gonna it's gonna behave like a phone app. So you kind of have this like floating phone app on your computer. Okay, so it's basically everything yeah. at once. It can be on my phone. Yeah. It's on the web. It could be its own. Uh, uh, um, everything is uh, all good to go. So that's yeah. fantastic. And for a business, like it's a web page. It's an app on your home screen. Yeah. It's a floating tablet in the office. Like that's great. <laughs> so but even- now let's take it to the next level. So even for folks like me who do sit, I, I still get the app. Everyone gets the app. So that's fantastic. So come back here. Let's go back to the Glide dashboard. Now people are, sh- I will always take photos of your pets. So uh, yeah, if the chicken, this, I don't know whose dog this is, but your dog is cute. and I, I love your dog already. So sorry, I missed what you said. Uh, so where are we going? Let's go back up to the Glide dashboard. Glide dashboard. Oh, okay, um, yeah. So- We're building our second app now. Now, so we have this other product, this other side of Glide called Pages. Right. Um, and let's just preview this, the property manager. See, there's a property manager template. If you put your cursor over yeah, the right property here. manager template, click on the eye. Yeah. This will just show you um, a preview. So this is a, a much more powerful layout system for creating full web and desktop apps. So you can see this is like a property management company that probably is using a spreadsheet today but they want something that's less prone to becoming broken, Mm -hmm. easier to onboard new employees to edit because spreadsheets are quite hard to learn and very easy to break. Um, So we can create an interface that's not a mobile app. There's this very rich data-driven, dynamic, Airtable-powered application. So we're going to quickly make one of these to do the expense approval. Quick question Um, before we jump in. Why would I pick... So... Why would I pick this versus the app? Is it the framework? Is it the complexity? How should I think about one versus the other? So you should use the app if you have a mobile use case. Right. If you have people mostly using phones and tablets and they're not in an office and they're collecting information, they use mobile features like geolocation, mapping, barcode scanning, taking pictures, uploading stuff in the field. And you should use pages if you're building a web or desktop application for someone who's on a a large screen that wants more data density, lots of actions for updating, uh, manipulating information, like quickly approving expenses, for example. Um, It's just, it's a much more powerful interface. It's also, it's frankly harder than harder to use. Glide apps is super simplified. Right. Pages is more powerful and it's a little bit of our intermediate step. So I think if you're just new to Glide, start with apps. Once you get the basics, move on to pages to create something a little bit more powerful. And what I le- what I th- really find interesting is that both can act on the same database in the back end, right? That's really That's right. You know, interesting. We're like, we're building two different types of apps. We're going to build a page yeah. and a mobile app, but both ultimately communicate to an Airtable base, but it could to a Google Sheet or to Glide yeah. tables itself. Okay. So open the approver page that we made before. And what you're going to see is there's a lot more data in it than when we left it. Yeah. Um, as it's connecting to that base. So this is everything that was added minus your cat, which you deleted. No. Uh, that's on you. I'll bring it back. I'll and bring Monsieur Georges back. We can have a whole stream with just Monsieur Georges. So um, if you click the uh, the play button in the fake little browser toolbar in the preview, yeah. it's going to it's going to sort of collapse the Got it. sidebars and give you a bigger view of this. Got it. And um, if you very carefully grab that resize handle on the middle right edge of the screen, you can see it. It's very hard to see. Middle right edge of the window. Middle right. Is it here? Vertical, oh, right here. Vertical. Right here. Oh, I see. So you have a resizer in a browser resizer in the browser. Okay, got it. <laughs> cool. This is a fake little browser we've made for you with the address bar and everything. Love and it. So Glide pages are fully responsive, um, but they they adapt to very large screens and they have a lot more power, which we're going to explore. Okay, cool. Um, so, so what do we want? The... Sorry. What do we want? Like, what do we want to do in this approver app that is different, right? Ultimately from the other app that we just built. Well, even more importantly, or maybe equally importantly, like 
what's different from what you would just do in Airtable? In Airtable, you could just have someone who's checking approve. Right. Um, but they also have access to all the information. Um, you might want to segment approval mm -hmm. by different departments. You might want to show more information. So this is just going to be a narrow view and a narrow capability on top of that base. Got it. And what's different here is we're going to show more information. And most importantly, we're going to give control over whether something's approved or not. Got it. Okay. Um, um, and we're going to also optimize the display to be faster, more efficient at doing that use case. For the approver, right? So just like, That's I right. just want to, you know, click. Okay, cool. So walk me through, what do we want this to end up looking like and how do we kind of add stuff in? Yeah. So first of all, click on the settings gear again. I want to show uh, how it's similar to setting up an app. So first we start with the appearance. We can leave the name and icon. That's, okay, that's, appearance, that's yeah, cool. Um, so we want to pick the same color. We're assuming that's like our company's color. Sure. And I like I like the navigation on the left uh, to show how this is different. And we'll see that in a second. Um, and style, I prefer light and color. Let's do highlight. Boom. And now if you click play on the, uh, the preview again, it will close the settings. And you'll see we got this sort of vertical sidebar that's more common in like web and desktop applications. Right, right. And we can create many different pages and sections of our app in the list here, and that'll be our navigation. Got it. Um, and but we're just going to do one page today. But I just I liked showing how this layout is different. Right. Yeah. So now um, I could have my approval workflow. I can have my payment workflow. I can you know uh, time off approvals as well. Right. Yeah. All of those in separate pages. Yeah. Here on the left. I think like the home screen could be like the the, the next things that need to be approved. Right. And then we can make another screen that's like the history where I can search totally. through everything. That's that makes total approved. sense. Cool. Um, but go ahead and click that X to close out of this little preview mode so we can get the our yeah. property panels back. Yeah. And let's go to the, the center icon at the top um, to work on the layout. And so on the left, we have this collection. So click on that. And um, this is a this is a component just like in the apps, but it's designed to show a lot more data and it can attach many actions to each one of these collection items that you can act on right away. So in the mobile app, you had to go into the page to get that delete button. Right. But I'll show you how we can do this all sort of more powerfully at the top. Let's okay. so go ahead and click through these options just to see. Yeah. Um, so grid, grid, list, I think tape is even, no, list, I think maybe list makes the most sense for us, right? So like one expense, maybe like a little button here would be cool. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Is that what you had in mind as well? Yeah, sounds great. So, so scroll down. Um, scroll down even further. We'll start with the button. Okay. So you see this collection item actions? Collection. Yeah, right here. Go ahead and click that, and you'll see that it's going to add a button to every item. And again, it's just it's just going to show a notification, but we want to approve. Right. Um, so go ahead and... Um, so here... So we're going to use an action called set column values. It's a little bit of a strange name. No, because we're updating and, uh, the approved field, the right? Current, so if I go back, record. yeah. So here I go into the row this, of this item. Yeah, this item's right. And then approved, uh, approved. goes right. to true. true. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm going to click off of this. So let's just approve the cactus. Go ahead and click go. And you can see that nothing happened because we didn't make any feedback yet. Right. But in the data, um, cactus is now approved. It's approved. And if you go over to Airtable, you'll see that that checkbox is checked. Cactus. Where's our cactus? Cactus. Interesting. Boom. Yeah. Approved. OK, got it. Perfect. So go back into the page and uh, click. So scroll all the way up to the top of the collection settings and go to options. And let's add a filter. So is it what we're doing now is essentially saying only show me in this list, the ones yeah. that have this collection item, I should say, right? Just collection. Let's filter it to be, uh, uh, is not a security. Okay. Filtering is not a security feature. Um, okay. So see if you can figure this one out. Okay. So it's approved is not checked. Right. And I think that's it. So my, now I'm understanding if, if we go approve, it filter, it's filtering them out as they go. Yeah. Right. And it's updating here pretty much in real time. So now we have kind of our pending approvals. 
And I imagine I could change this. I'm I'm going in here, David. I don't know about you. Like I'm I'm well, let's let's duplicate this page. So you have this receipt log on the left. Okay. Um pages at the not not that one. Oh. Although that would work too, but C says receipt log under pages. Go up. Uh pages. Pixels. Yeah, here. So duplicate this. Duplicate. And let's click on that and let's change the label of receipt log to um on the right. Let's call this a approved or something. Okay. And this would be, I like the fact that I can actually go in the navigation and I get the settings small thing because that's how I would do it. Right. I don't necessarily understand what the pages kind of are, but I do understand that like if I go here, so this would be this pending, pending, pending. Got it. And then let's go to the approved page and let's change that filter. Right. And then add filter, got it. Where approved is checked. Right. And so here, oh, sorry. Um, we actually, that's a filter at the page level. That's a confusing thing. You can ignore that for now. Oh, it has to be at the, the collection level. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So, so let me just uh, remove that. It will have no effect. Yeah. You can, you can remove yeah. it. Okay. So I go to approved, I go to the collection okay. and then so you've already set up that filter. So it's easy. Oh, to it's more granular. Yeah. Right. So it's at the lower level. So approved is checked right so now here we should have our approved ones so my expectation yeah. is that let's let's change the let's change the appearance on the approved page yeah. so it's easier to distinguish when we switch back like mm -hmm. use a table or yeah use a table for this one got it yeah so we have uh, four now go to pending just a little bit oh no i have no space right go to pending and approve the laptop laptop and then go to approved there there's go. laptop okay fantastic so this is this is the pro like the programming model of Glide. It's like buttons that update data, the interface updates right away, and right. then you use logic and filtering to move stuff around and you create a very simple workflow for people. Yeah. I think we can do but, a confetti here. I wanna do want to spend the next seven minutes kind of answering people's questions because we got some great sure. questions. But first, and, I'm I just like to congratulate us, David, and everyone watching that we built two apps in what was two apps. Two apps, 35 oh, minutes, very impressive work. Platform. I'm taking the rest of the day off. I don't know about you, David, everyone else. We've built two apps. Um, two apps, 45 minutes. That is a record here on Automate All Things. Great. We had built zero apps Amen. in 82. We also had users. Pardon? We had users of our apps. That's our true. Apps were public production and we had people use them. It wasn't just. Yeah, this is the most popular thing I've ever built. And we have had 82 streams. Um, so questions. So there were a lot of questions in the chat. So I do want to bring up some of the questions, right? Uh, a bit. Slow. Yeah, we were, we took too much time. Your power users could have built that in, in four minutes, but VA at a, we're trying to build, we're trying to get new people, right? We're trying to show people. Uh, um, so question from Daniel around, um, it sounds like you do give a lot of control. Um, is, is there a way of getting more control around, uh, uh, um, around oh the formatting is weird on my little dog so uh how can i get utmost control is there a way and i think there was a question from one of the experts which was you can support custom css but you don't officially support it um you were adding custom css on our business plan okay our most expensive version of glide um but our goal is to push this custom CSS thing as far away as possible Got it. and provide like the easy to use stuff for everyone who wants to customize. We want to hear from you. Like, how do you want to customize it? Maybe we can make that a first class feature that anyone can use. Right. Cause we don't want Glide to become a, a power user tool. There's already enough of those. I agree. Um, so another question, can I build charts and numbers? And I think there was an example here. Yeah. So there's a basic expense reporter. Um, Close, no, close the property manager one. So this basic expense reporter app, uh, the classic template. Yeah. Go ahead and preview that one. Right. I'm pretty sure this one, uh, this is similar to the app we built. Um, I think this one has a, we were going to do this, but let's see, summary. Um, so the summary tab at the bottom. Summary. The oh, right here. Okay. So it's, so oh, cool. We have charts and they update instantly. So if you like edit a number, like the chart moves immediately. Right. And they're live charts uh, and they're interactive. So yeah, there's. It's a limited set of charts, but it's definitely enough to build really useful dashboards. <laughs> so if folks have questions, I'm going to go be going through, uh, drop your questions from David. Um, I, I, a question that we got, I know it's somewhere here. Can you talk to us through the plans? Like what is the free plan? When do I go paid? Like what are the plans today on Glide? Yeah. 
So we have super generous plans to get you started. The, on the free plan, you can actually publish up to three apps with 500 rows of data mm -hmm. each and you don't pay anything and you can use Airtable. And there's some tools that have Airtable integration that they're like read only, like you can edit the data. Fantastic. Um, there is a monthly cap on how many edits you can do to the data. Got it. It's a thousand on the free tier. Okay. So if you're building apps for just a couple people yourself, like you're going to be on the free tier, that's fine. Got it. And you go up to starter when you need up to 5,000 records and you need more data updates. There's a couple other features there. Pro has more features still. You can find this all on our pricing page. Fantastic. And I saw a few comments. So, you know, great cheers, Pan. Um, I, I, it seems like we have a lot of pros in the chat. Um, just if you have like a link to get your profile, to see the apps that you've built, go ahead and drop it in the chat. I'll make sure I add it in the description. I think what's really exciting, you know, in, in the 45 minutes we've spent together, David, is just like the world of possibilities. So, uh, if you are an app builder, uh, drop in the chat, like what you've built. I'm curious if you have a gallery or things like that. And if you're watching this back in the future, you know, future viewers, hello, uh, go ahead and drop, uh, um, in the comments. I'm really curious to see what people have built. Um, so I just want to go through a few more questions, right? Uh, just trying to find out if I miss your question, drop it again in the chat. Um, question from Daniel, can you do custom domains? Is that possible? Yep. Not on the free tier. Got it. And you have to upgrade uh, for that. There's already people in the chat, like answering the questions before, uh, <laughs> before you're able to. Um, I'll also point yeah. out, Aaron, a yeah. really useful thing for people getting started, this templates gallery that we have. We yeah. have, I believe, over 400 templates now. Oh, you were just... Uh, I was just here. Just was I there? On the homepage, templates. Okay, cool. Let's... Here you can, and if you scroll, you see like all of the common use cases. You can copy, almost all of these are free apps, pages, really complex, powerful stuff. And we have uh, guides by Jack where he's like spends an hour teaching you how to build like a really powerful applied page. Lots of resources here to see all the possibilities. And yes. a lot of our experts are pros that you mentioned. Right. Some of them have templates here that you can discover. Oh, fantastic. We've got one for MakerPad, some built by Glide. Uh, so a bunch of examples here. So do you recommend folks going into templates to kind of... Um, boom. I'll note that none of these templates connect to Airtable out of the box. You can connect an Airtable base to them. Um, and uh, But they use our built-in data source called Glide Tables. Um, mm -hmm. Glide works completely independently of Airtable, so you can use it on your own if you'd like. Um, and uh, so just just know when you copy them, you'll just be using our built-in tables. Yeah. So there's a question from Daniel, which is uh, around um, the difference between Glide tables, not 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 from like a data perspective, but just the latency. So it sounds like what you're saying yeah. is that even if I have my data source in Airtable. And I have computed fields in Glide, whether that's Glide tables or just as in the data source, those will have no latency. Whereas if I'm updating information in Airtable and retrieving it, that might have latency. That's right. Perfect. So Daniel, hope that answers so, your yeah. question. Glide tables are the fastest thing. They're built in. And uh, Airtable, Excel, and Google Sheets all have this really powerful ability to do formulas and have computed properties and Airtable is even better because it's automations feature pairs perfectly with this stuff. Like when you add an expense, you could just kick off an Airtable automation. Exactly. Every one. Um, but if you're using formulas and calculations in the Airtable, they're not going to be instantaneous on the phone. Um, at most they can take up to a couple minutes to sync, mm -hmm. but Airtable is actually, they're coming out with a, like a push notification API for integrations like us. Got it. To notify immediately of new changes. Perfect. Um, so that should help a ton. Yeah, and just uh, no one shares the roadmap with me because obviously I, I would come here or on Table Talk or whatever and just spill the beans. So uh, Daniel knows what's happening at Airtable more than I do, uh, which is the way it should be. Uh, um, fantastic. Okay, um, so that those were the questions. And again, if there are more questions, first of all, really appreciate everyone joining. If there are more questions, David, what is the best way to reach you, your team? What do you want to do? You want to leave some words of inspiration for everyone uh, before we sign off today? Um, words of inspiration. Wow. Or, well, or just how to reach you? Out. Like how do how do we keep learning Glide? Where do we go from here? Yeah, just I just would recommend following Glide apps on Twitter, and uh, that that's where we do a lot of feature announcements and we engage with our community. Speaking of community, we have 
probably the most active community forum I've seen in no code. Maybe Webflows is more active, but we might even we might even give them a run for their money. <laughs> um, if you ask a question on our community forum, like more than one person will answer within five minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just incredibly helpful place. So I really recommend checking out the community. And um, yeah, words of wisdom, I would say now is the best time ever to be creating things. We have amazing tools like Airtable and Glide and they're free to use. So I, I think we should all uh, recognize uh, our gratitude to live in this moment where we can create this stuff. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. As someone who doesn't write code, the fact that you know we can come on here and build something in 35 minutes or 40 minutes that, you know, is better than most things that have ever been built, right? Like I've been, I've used some really bad mobile apps and if the mobile apps look like this and are built super easily update information, I think we are truly, um, you know, living in the best time for no code, uh, for folks like us who can build amazing things. So, um, David, uh, huge thanks for you coming, everyone joining, uh, if you're not a Glide expert, go join the community, get involved. If you want to build something cool, keep in touch. Uh, but David, huge thanks for you coming. Everyone else, I will see you next week with uh, CJ and Stripe and talking about how to uh, not give our credit cards over the phone using Twilio, Airtable, and Stripe payment links. Uh, but yeah, huge thanks, David. I will see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Aaron.